After attending a book fair at Copperfield's Books, my wife gave me a children's art book titled Americans Who Tell the Truth, because the artist, Robert Shetterly, includes a portrait of Eleanor Roosevelt, one of my own sculpture subjects. Within minutes of opening the book and seeing the variety of rich images, I sat down at the computer to write Rob, asking for permission to use his paintings for an online project. He shocked me with not only permission, but also a suggestion that since he would be in my area, we should get together for an interview at Marin Country Day School. The Shetterly recordings are bits of that conversation touching on heroes, books, and personal quotes for our own portraits. So I learned about you through your book, Americans Who Tell the Truth, but what's the last book you read? Or what book do you enjoy recommending, giving, sharing with your friends? Well, that's an interesting question. I mean, I try to read an enormous amount, um, and especially by and about people I'm painting portraits of. And right now I'm about to paint a portrait of Michael Pollan, who wrote The Omnivore's Dilemma, and uh, including a number of other books about basically about the food industry and what food really means in our lives and um, what we have to, how, what important part food is in terms of actually redefining an economy that is sustainable. Um, so I would certainly recommend his book, uh, Omnivore's Dilemma, a great book. Um, often to, especially to high school classes and adults, I recommend Howard Zinn's history, uh, the, the uh, um, People's, people's history, history, people's history of the United States, right. uh, because I think it's a, uh, an essential book to understand uh, how American history has really worked, why all these fights for about rights are necessary, how they've been stymied and blocked, and how people have carried on anyway. Um, I mean, and talk about heroes. You know, that there's it's a story of the heroes, of you know, not the, pe the heroes who've profited from um, you know the great corporations in America but the heroes who have tried to breathe life into what we think of as the promise of America in terms of its own ideals, ideals about equality and justice and uh, uh, you know, all those things that we think of as being the foundation of this country. Um, the other book, another book that I recommend a lot, which I think is probably as important as, as Zinn's book, is Derek Jensen's book called The Culture of Make-Believe. To me, that defines really where we are now in terms of the stress that we have put on the environment and um, how unsustainable what we call civilization is. That, and what he's trying to say to you through that book, which is huge and but incredibly exciting to read, uh, is uh, well, he's telling the story of kind of what it feels like to be a victim of this culture. You know, whether you're a redwood or a salmon, you know, running up a river, or um, a child in, in this culture and looking for a future. He gets at it in a way that very few other writers actually do. I mean, one of the things that's so important about Zinn's book is Zinn says, you know, if you're going to read this book, you've got to let go of some of the anger that you feel because otherwise you won't go, you won't be able to deal with anything. It'll be too overwhelming. Because when you look back at all the outrages of American history, all the contradictions and hypocrisies, yeah. it, it will um, overwhelm you emotionally. He said, try to read this without letting yourself be, you know, just you know, buried in your own grief and anger. Derek Jensen is just the opposite in a way. What he says, is saying through writing his book is, you won't understand this unless you feel it. And you need to go through the process of feeling the anger and the grief and the outrage. And I'm going to take you by the hand and lead you through it. You know, what it felt like, you know, in the 1870s to be a Native American in this country and be run over by white people and massacred. What it felt like to be a clear-cut forest or to be a damned river. You know, he looks at it from the point of view of everything that's part of this environment, uh, whether they're people or animals or, or places or plants or, you know, bodies of water. That sounds perhaps kind of flaky. It isn't. It's, it is uh, just beautifully written and very exciting to read and I think incredibly important. I mean, one of the things that our culture 
subsists on is denial, that we are actually doing the damage to each other, to other species, you know, to the environment that we are. You can't read Derek Jensen and be in a state of denial. It has to all fall off in order to appreciate that book. And I think he's one of the most important people to read. I, you know, connected to that, mm -hmm. um, Edward O. Wilson, yeah, yeah. Uh, author of Consilience, talks about how everything is connected. Mm -hmm. And although he's looking at the, the physics and the biology, the chemistry, uh, I think that that same principle could be applied to society. Mm -hmm. and, and we see our actions affecting everything around us as individuals within a community, but also a society on a continent. Absolutely. I mean, um, when you read Jensen, he is frequently quoting E.O. Wilson. Oh, really? <laughs> so, uh, but it, and he's making the same point. And, um, but, you know, Walt Whitman was making the same point 150 years mm -hmm. ago, that right. everything is connected. And if we do damage to and, and treat other species or plants without respect, uh, we're showing no respect for ourselves, basically, and endangering our own life on the planet.